Okay, now I'm all nervous. Okay, we are recording. Sweet. So... What? You, you drink that a lot? I do. They're, they're very sweet. Pack a punch. They do. Have you had the double espresso yet? No. Have you tried these? I've tried those. Yeah. Are you a fan? Well, coffee kind of makes me crazy, so I, I had to lay off. Yeah. Really? Does it make you jittery? It makes me cry, to be honest. Really? I just, yeah, I go into a state of just emotional breakdown, and um, I have to lie down and, like, eat, eat, like, an entire pizza to myself, and drink a lot of water and take yeah. like a benzodiazepine that's <laughs> usually my routine okay <laughs> so uh, i read i read your book um pony castle but what, what's your how do you feel about that book now um it, it was published actually, in like what 2015 15 yeah yeah i feel good about it yeah i feel good. Yeah, I feel good about it. Yeah, it starts off really strong with um, with like a lot of repetition. Mm. But how did you learn that style? Um, I don't know. I mean, I I wasn't it, only after I read I wrote the book did I find other authors that you know are similar um often because people would recommend it to me afterwards i'd be like oh this reminds me of this and then i'd read it i'd be like oh cool yeah. but when i when i when i wrote it um you know a lot of it a lot of that book is um taken from notes and journals and things that i've uh written over the years so yeah the fractured bits yeah Yeah. so even the repetition parts I mean I guess some of the style came came after I had it um I had I had an idea of what it was going to be yeah yeah what okay let's get into that after but like what the opening is like the opening is just like one of the strongest openings seen because i've never seen that your style i've never Mm. seen your style before and and i feel like i've seen it done a little bit but you go like all in with it (laughs) you know what i mean with the i don't want to just call it repetition but like because we do that we get drunk on uh we get drunk and drink champagne and and you just do that for like the whole yeah 10 I mean, you keep going with it, but yeah. 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 And you wanna, so th- that was cool. Thanks. You wanna, you won the Megatron prize? Is that what it's called? <laughs> Megatron prize in. <laughs> yeah, Metatron, like the arc. Metatron. Like the, like the angel. Oh, there is an angel called Metatron. There's an angel called Metatron. Um, yeah, Metatron is cool. They are based in Montreal, and they um, they publish a lot of young, or yeah, young writers. Sort of yeah. like I had never published anything at all ever before. Yeah, they published my book. So um, they the only reason I sub- I submitted to their contest was because they promised to give everyone feedback on their submission this was this was their first time doing it so they weren't that popular yet and so they they thought you know they thought they would have the resources to actually give everyone feedback um and i really wanted feedback so i submitted it and then i just didn't i didn't think that anything would happen um and then yeah they decided to publish it and they've been like they're really amazing i mean they're like one of the only I find they're like one of the most interesting, uh, relevant publishers in in Canada. I've like, yeah, yeah, and they but they it's Canada. So no, I'm joking. 
they're they're really great and they have yeah. they foster a really amazing um like they're kind of a big anchor for me in terms of just the community yeah wow that's interesting would there be like a like who would you compare them to for american indie lit I don't know. I don't know if there is a comparison. Yeah. Because, you know, they um they they don't publish I mean, they publish poetry, a lot of poetry, mostly poetry. Sure. Okay. Some they just published their first novel, Mine's a Novella, so they've just published their first novel. It's mostly okay. and then and then a lot of things that, like my book like inhabit sort of the is in the middle, you know, between uh, yeah. novella yeah. I would just call it a novella. What would you call it? Yeah, I would call it a novella. Um, so I don't know of any publishers that are doing that in the States. Do you? Yeah, sure. Like who? Indie publishers for poetry? Yeah. For poetry? Mm-hmm. Like poetry, but also then Anybody long, longer Anybody who publishes format. Julieta Scoria, maybe disorder. Right, sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then yeah, I mean, and there's also shorter work from um, I think the new tyrant book, which is like long. Ba- I can't pronounce his name, but the new tyrant book, long ba- babaki or something. Um, mm-hmm. It's called floating notes, and that's gonna be like a novella or just very very short. I mean, and animals eat each other by El Nash. Right. 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 Yeah. A lot of novellas coming out, but not what? so much poetry. Do you remember who published who published Chelsea Hodson's last book? Big Dick, not an indie publisher. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe her. F- yeah. Anyway, Metatron is amazing. Cool. That's great that you found like a community of people. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you like? What was your writer's journey? I'm biased because I love the book, but I feel like there's a level of mastery there that doesn't just come from simply writing, you know, just starting. It doesn't seem like a beginner. You don't seem like a beginner, like you just started and then got the hang of it. It seems like you found your style later. What what is what happened? Um, how'd you find your style and stuff? Um, I, I just, I've written since I can remember um never i was never i never studied writing or anything um i went to film school but i i think that my biggest uh how i learned the most was by journaling which is what i've done my whole life and um really is like at the like is like the cornerstone to all my writing um yeah because I have a really bad memory and I um, I need to write things down if I want to remember them. So, yeah, a lot of it, I think, is just, I think it's just writing every day. Or I don't write every single day, but, like, um, if, it, if it sounds like it's not my first sort of thing, that's because it, it was, like, many years before that that I was writing. But Are you I've, a hammer or you... Or- a flower when it comes to like your writing schedule by the way like you <laughs> you know what I mean yeah um um that's a good question I think right now I'm a flower and it's not working yeah yeah hmm. um I think that when I was more I, I think there was a period in my life where I had more urgency in general and I think that's when yeah I was just writing more because I felt like um, it was the only way to relieve myself. Yeah. Now I'm, and I don't want to be like, oh, now that I'm happier, I don't write because it's not not true, really. But um, I think that if you like, maybe there's, it's possible that I'm in a place in my life where I don't feel the same like existential. Yeah. Sort of. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but I I also think that that is is always shifting. Sure. So 
I think there's like, you have to just figure out um, when you're in a period of, of not necessarily feeling that urgency, you just have to create it artificially. Mm. Jesus. <laughs> I hope you don't feel like existential dread in order to <laughs> write. How, what about you? What are you? Um, what are you? I'm in the similar place. I'm kind of a flower. I try to write five days a week, um, which has been going well, like in the past, like two weeks has been going well. Mm -hmm. But uh, the past two weeks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so I went to Tokyo. I lived in Tokyo for two years. Mm. Uh, and before that, I was very serious about writing as well. Um, and for those two years, I wrote and read four hours a day every day. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like you said, there was a lot of there was a lot of like triumph. It was kind of manic, to be honest. I was like, some days I just felt like the dopest. I still feel that way sometimes, but sometimes I felt like the dope. I was doing the dopest things, and then other days I would get severe anxiety because I didn't know if I could write that day and mm -hmm. um so there are reasons that so for those reasons I don't really want to be a hammer so mm -hmm. I've been trying to be a flower mm. and it feels like like, you know, the 10,000 hour rule, if you have to get to 10,000 yeah. hours, I don't see myself getting to like 10,000 hours this way, basically. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. But, yeah. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, yeah. I, I think, yeah, I think it just, like, it's funny because I, part of the reason why I'm in Mexico is because I, you know, I wanted to, um, just be alone and I didn't know anyone here so I was like okay well it's warm there and I can get a little apartment and be by myself um but it hasn't turned out that way because and I don't know how it was for you in Tokyo but like well I was every, alone like I, were, I didn't have a boyfriend or girlfriend I was just by myself yeah I mean like my partner isn't here anymore and but still like there's just a million people that are yeah. <laughs> that are coming through the city so I'm like yeah. oh, I I miscalculated a little bit or like I I also feel like part part you know a big part of me is like fuck having to go away you know just do it where yeah. you are because it's just never going to be you're never going to have the like quote unquote you know the perfect circumstances so right um yeah uh, yeah maybe that's what you learned or... yeah 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 so you rode on a scooter very slowly <laughs> i'm was... getting i'm getting better. are they like broken or were you just literally like scared to go fast um, I was just scared. <laughs> you were going unusually slow <laughs> in that video. Also, the the roads are, because of the earthquakes, the roads yeah. are not, um, I mean, they do a pretty good job of sort of <laughs> fixing the roads, but there's quite a few sort of potholes and those scooters yeah. are, um, they're not, they don't, they don't feel very hefty. So you're, yeah. it's. It feels like you could. Also, I didn't understand the traffic, and I'm, <laughs> and I just, uh, I, I don't like adrenaline. Yeah. Um, but I'm faster now than I was in that video. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, what What do you think? Like, so you're an actress too, right? Mm hmm. Um is your main like do you have a main focus because it seems like you're very dedicated to writing so is that your main your main bag or is it just like i'm gonna do both and and be good at both yeah i think it's doing both i want to do both like i wouldn't be able to choose one over the other yeah but um but acting is my 
bread and butter. So, yeah, uh, you know, in, in that in that sense, it's. Can more... we talk about that? We weren't you weren't you in the poltergeist? <laughs> no, I was just I was uh, I helped Sam Rockwell um, learn his lines. Okay, <laughs> so you're not like a secret like star in some way. <laughs> No, I was just, just like, like I was just hanging thing. with Sam and helping him. Like it was actually a master class in acting for me. It's great. Yeah, I'm sure he's, he's the like nicest amazing. person. He's the nicest human being. Wow. Really, like now after all these horrible things have come out, I'm like, oh, I know that he was a good dude. Oh, did he get me too? No, he didn't. Oh, he did. I mean, like he's. Just, oh, he didn't. Okay. No, no, he didn't. Let's talk about Me Too. How do you feel about it? <laughs> oh, my God. We're not talking about that right now. <laughs> okay. We're not talking about that. Um, okay. I can say this, that Jennifer Greedis, you know, Jennifer Greedis from yeah. X-Ray. Mm-hmm. So she wants me to, to get dirt on you. Um, you like, she wants me to talk to you. She wants, I'm just going to ask a question. Um like what what is this book like he, there's a lot of affairs going on and you've had a boyfriend for 8 years no where did you Six where years. Did, no okay so what <laughs> so you where are you getting your information from clearly not an accurate source mm-hmm. so what what's true what's false i mean it comes from diaries so were you just like gallivanting around you know experimenting with drugs and sex and stuff i think that the book in some ways is what i i'm really interested in uh i've always been really interested in opiates for some reason i don't i don't know why but yeah um i'm also just terrified of them and drugs in general so i think part of my interest in writing pony castle was uh imagining an alternate reality where i would become addicted to and that's so interesting because like isn't it in like an alternate universe well you mean because of the end the ending well just like throughout the book they keep saying like there's another place besides this one Mm. i think a friend says that like yeah i mean that's sort of up for interpretation but that friend also has you know schizophrenia yeah so she has a sort of she's she's having a psychotic breakdown in that in that part um where she's just like thinks that she has to save the earth yeah <laughs> yeah but i think that it's sort of it's sort of what i what i because the the narrator is a version of me and anita is a version of me um anita actually comes up a lot in my in my work she's like a person that i come back to a lot like uh, i put Anita her, is the friend uh, yeah Anita is the friend yeah that's what i wanted to talk about well basically like the males in the book are all want like leaves one wanting there's not there's they're not complete human beings in the sense where it's like they're kind of dicks or by the way, that was a fantastic scene where, like, he grabs your, not your wrist, but the character's wrist. Mm. And then you say, like, the way you phrase it is, now it's a scene. And do people realize it's a scene? It, that was good. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, the men are, like, not that great, I feel. <laughs> or maybe your perception, yeah, your perception. or Yeah. But then, and there's acting. You feel like a, not you, like. The character, the protagonist feels like a a character she's performing. Mm. She becomes a character. Mm. And then, but there's this, like, very brief moment with the roommate where it's like she's touching your hair or you're falling asleep in the same bed, and it seems, like, very pure. In a I way actually, that the relationships weren't. I actually think that the protagonist's boyfriend, though, is a really good person. and yeah. You know, she, I think the fact that the male characters don't um, seem 
that complete is because the protagonist just she's the one essentially treating everyone like shit. There are people around her that, 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 that care. There are people around her that care, and she she can't reciprocate. Yeah. Um. So she doesn't actually try to truly. Really, she's so in her own universe that she can't connect with anyone really, except for Anita, who, you know, spoiler. Right. Alert. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it, but you know what I you know what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't think I do. Well, I guess this is also sort of, you know, this is also sort of up for interpretation. But is Anita even a real person? <gasps> dun dun dun! I think so. She's too cool. <laughs> she means too much. Anita is pretty fucking cool. I wish she yeah. was my friend. Yeah, she seems like a very good friend. Mm. But in terms of dirt, um, you know, like, so I don't. I mean, it sounds like a lot. Sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I obviously experimented with drugs, and but I didn't um, not in that way at all. Like, it's, it, yeah. it, it really is like. The. But the champagne scene has to be real. The opening, <laughs> the opening, like that has to be based on your relationship, is it not? It was partly based on a relationship. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was too intimate, I felt, to not be based in some reality. Mm. Your camera is doing something weird. Is it? Oh, it's stopped. What is it doing? Oh, no, it's just. Does it not have a book from it or something from it? But if I'm being honest with myself and like, I I feel like I reached like a new level in writing, maybe in August or something. Mm -hmm. So the stuff, I think it's two things. You know how when you listen to a CD over and over again, and then it stops being meaningful to you? Mm, sure. The, so the songs, I think that's happened. The songs are less meaningful to me. Yeah. So the stories are less meaningful. Yeah. But then also I'm just like really excited about what I'm doing now and Is it a book of short stories? It is, yeah. Mm. Why do I tell you these things? I don't even know you. <laughs> to be honest. I mean you you but can always you could always swap things out. You don't you know it's I feel like that's the beauty of having a book of short stories is that you don't, um, it's not going to fall, it's not going to totally fall apart if, like, you yeah. know, even with the novella, it just will fall apart if it's exactly. not. There's a piece of it that doesn't work. It's just, well, the whole, now, you know, I'm fucked. So. Right. At least with short stories, you have a lot more flexibility. Mm, that's true. And there's something really romantic about writing until you're 33 and then publishing like your best stuff from mm -hmm. for like 10 years i mean like neutral milk hotel like had recordings do you know neutral milk hotel yeah yeah and they have like recordings from like early 90s like 91 92 and then they just put that all together in their 99 album like their their big dick album um airplane over the sea yeah, and that was that was like a classic. So that it sounds like a, it. I think that we just like are so obsessed with getting published, and it doesn't make sense if it's if it doesn't feel right. We're obsessed or with we're obsessed with getting published, and we're obsessed um, with doing it while we're yeah. as young as possible. Yeah, it's, it's like stupid. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I think no, you have to just stupid. try to produce the best work. Right, right. I mean, Pony Castle is a fucking short book, and it took me a very, yeah. very long time to write. I I agree. It seems very tight. Um, can I ask you, like, a, maybe a critical question? Why did you stop using the repetition that you used in the beginning? The style breaks, or the style yeah. changes? Uh, because, because the drug use changes 
Yeah. Her. Yeah. And, um, you know, towards the end, there's there's one chapter where there's there isn't even any punctuation because she. Whoa, that's wild. What what section is that? Uh, I can't remember. It's one of the okay. very last chapters. Um, okay. It's like one page. There's no punctuation. Uh, okay. And it's just sort of Krisha. It just it's. She's a very anxious, controlling person in the beginning, and he, throughout she becomes less so. She loses control, wow. and I think that's why the repetition. I I lose the repetition. Okay. Because her because her um yeah it just it just worked. Are you okay with me? using repetition in my writing i gotta sign off on that okay i'm having a lot of fun with it yeah. <laughs> no obviously i mean i didn't invent it i know gertrude stein or somebody did <laughs> low-key i heard she does that because really uh, yeah yeah i was talking to um to someone and she just and and i was and she's a writer and i was like this I noted her use of repetition in a sentence, and she said Gertrude Stein mm. did it in a very different way, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. Dates back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think of other writers that use it similarly. Um... I don't know. That's why I, I love the book so much. Is that yeah. I don't know, you know. Yeah, yeah. Do you have you ever read Lydia Davis? Yes. I I was really inspired by her when I wrote this. Um, but it was it's I wouldn't say like it's direct. It's very different. Well, it's not direct. It would be very different. Yeah. It's very, yeah. No, it's it's completely different. <laughs> yeah, but but it would still be. Kind of the tradition, I think. Do you know Jean Rees? Mm, no. She's my favorite writer. But I didn't, again, I didn't start reading her until I, until I finished Pony Castle. It's so dope. Yeah, but she's... I'm like trying to be okay with like dopeness that's unoriginal, but honestly, like one of the things that I loved about Pony Castle is that I'd never seen it, seen that before. Mm. So good, very That's, cool that you, you. That came really... upon that organically. Yeah. What is? Yeah, what you your... you kind of have to because otherwise it just feels like affectation. Um. Yeah, I, I, I can, see, I can see that. But there's just things for me that come very naturally, like, um, Wallace's writing, um. I think I gravitated towards pretty, pretty organically mm -hmm. um, in my style. Like my style changed dramatically after I read Infinite Jest, but it was <laughs> in an organic way and an, in an unconscious way. It wasn't, you know, me writing out the first lines of Infinite Jest and then creating a story from that. You know, that writing exercise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's so yeah. interesting. Like, do you struggle with that? Like wishing your style was different than what it is well i struggle with uh wishing that it was different than it is no it's it's not so it's not so much that that's not so much the struggle I do. What's, what is this? I do find that like my writing is best when it's in a, a sort of vignette form, oh. and I've been trying to break out of the vignette it's because you know I I also I'm a screenwriter and so I, I think in these scenes and I feel like sure sure when writing something long format it's I I just had a hard time. Um, it felt suddenly it felt like I was straining because I was trying so hard to just to break out of that. But wow. I, don't, 
I don't think you have to break out of it. I mean, there's lots oh. of writers that write like that, and it's amazing. Are you talking about staying in the scene, staying in a scene? I'm talking about how short they are in my book. Oh, and, yeah, like the fractured pieces, almost yeah. like flash, flash fiction in a way. Yeah, sort of, yeah. I feel that, too. I struggle. I, I, I don't yeah. know if it's a struggle, but I would like to write longer pieces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Nobody teaches us these things. <laughs> you know, we just like learn on our own. Mm-hmm. By ourselves cool. in our dark rooms. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. What are you reading right now? Um, I'm reading the Argonauts. Oh, cool. Like, yeah. And Godel, Escher, and Bach. Who's that? Um, that is Hofstadter. And have you read um like the Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance? Oh yeah, no, I haven't it's read it. It's not him. I not know him. about the book. It's similar philosophy to philosophy for pop philosophy. It's not pop, but it's like if you don't have to be a graduate philosophy student to understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nice. The Argon- How are you liking the Argonauts? I, I'm i struggling with it, to be honest. Like, yeah. Get through the first third of the book and you will fly through it. I found I, that- I flew through. I, I was flying through it, yeah. Because I found that the first third, I was like, wait, it's good and I like it, but I'm not. I'm, it's a slog. It is a slog, yeah. Seems. It, it seems... gets. I find though that there's a tipping point where I just couldn't put it down. Okay. Did yeah. you read my year of rest and relaxation? I did. I think you told me. You know what? I told you. I, I told you that I didn't love it that much, yeah. but I I've changed my mind. Oh, whoa! Bold move. I, because I was in the middle of it when I talked to you, and I think, yeah. that, you know, I have. It's not a perfect book, but I really. After I finished it, I just kept thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. And I missed. I missed it. Oh. I wanted to be back in that world. That's nice. Have you so read I, Life Blog? No, I haven't read Life Blog. I've been like passively, aggressively, like asking my friends, like. Why haven't you finished live blog? <laughs> like, <laughs> what's going on? Why not? I just think it's really good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would I actually would like to read it. What? But you didn't like my year of rest and relaxation, right? I loved the first like half, and then I felt like the second half was like the first half. You know, it's like the same thing, kind of. That's I, th- I kind of loved that about it. Yeah. Because there wasn't this big turning point. It just kept going. Yeah, there was no turning point. Which I thought was really that's brave. That's not original. I just thought it was a brave thing to do. It wasn't like so sure. Sure. Uh, trying to... I don't know. It wasn't trying to shock you or give you this big reveal. It was just, okay, well, this is we're going to just keep going like this. Yeah. I hear you. I I thought it was a good book. I think yeah. Mosh Feg is really cool. A really cool person, talented writer. She's Did you know that she stuff. wrote her first her first book? She wrote with um, the help of the ninety day novel. I think I heard that. Yeah. Pretty cool. It, yeah, yeah. I think it's fucking rad that she taught that she has talked about it openly. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's uh, it, it's who, like, wants, who wants to admit that they're using a, a formula? <laughs> well, well, that's the thing, is that she would have no problem admitting that. Mm-hmm. Because with Eileen, I think that was her first one, she, yeah. she was trying to sell it. Right. She said, she said, I wrote this in order to sell it. Oh, I, I know. didn't care about like it being... Amazing. I'm going to use a formula. I'm going to make a best-selling book. That's Incredible. my understanding of it. And I love that because that takes that takes balls. It does take balls, yeah. I and mean, second I... off, like, okay, whoever's watching this, do exactly what Mosh Fig did, and I bet you you're not going to sell your book, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. 
And she's openly like anti PC, which I'm personally a fan of. Mm-hmm. I um, haven't read Eileen. I I I need to. Have you read it? I'm not gonna read a book that's like like expressly trying to sell like sell. But it was. I mean, having read her other book now, I would I would absolutely read it. Okay, I feel like it's in a different tradition. Like. My Labyrinth and Relaxation was a, an honest attempt at quality that that Eileen was not. Yeah. Could be wrong. I but you can it. have you can have a you can have an ambition, and then the product can be a very genuine product. Yeah. So even though she started out saying she just wanted to write a book to sell it, doesn't mean that the book. Loses its, loses its value because of the starting ambition. Yeah, yeah. You're assuming that she eventually came to that genuine place with it. I don't know. I, yeah. I hope for her sake that that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I also think it's just really tough to write or to produce anything with no genuine, like, that resonates with people with no genuine feeling. But maybe that makes maybe a lot that, of sense. But to maybe me too. actually, to but maybe that's not fucking true. There's lots of really shitty things out there that people love. Yeah, and then of course there's a way to say like, but they genuinely love that shitty stuff, and it's like, <laughs> okay, I don't really care. You know, I'm not gonna read it. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you reading now? Um, I just did a very cheesy um, thing with my partner where we read each other's favorite books. You're like crazy about your partner. It's so cute, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You guys read each other's thingies? What? Yeah, we read each other's favorite books. Okay. And so I read his one of his favorites, which is uh, The Sisters Brothers. You know that? It's, it's like it was adapted into a movie. I don't think I know it, no. It was really good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was Patrick DeWitt. He's a Canadian writer. Um, cool. It's a movie with Joaquin Phoenix and John C. Riley now, but the movie's supposed to be like not as good. Sure. But yeah, it's, it's a Western, which I don't... It's not my... It's not what I gravitate towards. Yeah. <laughs> but I really liked it. And yeah. Now I'm reading this book that I don't know if I, I'm going to finish. Um, it's called I'm Not Ashamed by Barbara Payton. Cool. I just picked it up because it sound, the, um, the book jacket, it's just, it sounded good. It, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I'll finish it. And then I, what else am I reading? I'm reading a bunch of other stuff that I didn't bring to Mexico. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. <laughs> I was thinking we'd go for an hour and mm -hmm. just like see what happens for the next 19 minutes. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was thinking also that maybe X-Ray would be open to linking this video and then I could like transcribe a, a nice bit and transcribe it you know then people get a little glimpse of what the interview is and then they can go to the video because Jen told me that she's open to doing videos so we'll see Oh, that could be cool for X-ray. Yeah. Well, I did tell you that I'm much better in writing than I am on the phone, though. Oh. Uh, okay. Would you rather do writing? Well, I just think that if I could write it, write. I don't know. I don't know. You're the subject. I feel like this would be cool. I think this could be cool. 
but I cer- I'm, I'm certainly more capable of going in depth and be much more articulate when I'm writing rather than just talking. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Are you a uh, sparkling or flat water? Sparkling. So once you go sparkling, you never go back. <laughs> I like I like half flat though, half flat sparkling. I want to talk about your writing. Like what? What do you, what are you doing? Are you, are you maintaining, keeping your style open to changing your style? Has your style shifted? I can't remember your X-ray piece that well. Oh, but you said well, it was a similar style. It's a similar style, yeah. Um, oh, and I was going to send you that other thing I wrote. I think everything else I've written is in the similar style. I. I had a, I was working on a novel for a while that I, um, I worked on it for like a year and then I just realized that it was garbage yeah. and, um, I'm basically not keeping any of it. Yeah. But I think part of, uh, I don't, I think part of the reason why it didn't work for me was because I was just way too everything was way I was being way too cerebral about it because Pony Castle is like a very intu- everything in that book pretty much is intuition I agree so yeah. I heard it. but I guess this is just coming back to that thing where what, how do you um, how do you make that jump from these shorter pieces into into a piece? I don't know. Can we talk yeah. about that? That seems like <laughs> where we're both at. Yeah. I have this like amazing piece that I really love that I just wrote. I have two of them, and they're both like eight hundred words. Mm-hmm. I and I love the length that it's at. But mm-hmm. I, but you know there is that yeah. part of me where it's like I'd love it to be like. 2,000 words instead, 3,000, but I don't want to mess it up. Is that what you think? Or like, what stops you from going through? Well, because I I, I always conclude. I always just get to a place where it naturally concludes. And I'm like, that's, oh, well, that's the piece. That's all there is to the piece. And anything else would just be contrived. So it's just, it's just the most natural thing to me, but I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I'll be right back. Well, have you tried for for your conundrum? Have you tried um, expanding? So, like, if there's a line that's really good in your piece, you can write from there. And expand it that way instead of you don't have to expand the conclusion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I to, yeah, definitely. But even when I do that, it doesn't like it doesn't. I think I think what I have to do is uh, lean more on on structuring things um, before beforehand sure. so but that is what I did with my with the novel I was writing and um you know I I, I still hated that but I it worked like it worked to the extent that I was it was long <laughs> it was fucking long and I didn't it, you know it wasn't trash or anything it just I was I, I think I was just focusing too much on plot which it's not it's not interesting to me really yeah. i was just fixated on writing something yeah. the- one second my vape is going crazy um oh. yeah if you're Why, focusing how's on it, if how's you're it going bored, crazy it's out of battery oh yeah if you're focusing on like boring 
on boring stuff, it's probably you're not going to be thrilled about it, about the piece. Well, I just don't generally care about plot. It's like the least yeah. interesting thing to me. But that's what's great about Pony Castle is that I didn't read it with like, what's going on here? Who are these people? I just read it like with a flow, like a river or mm -hmm. like looking at the stars or something. Like I didn't try to think anything other than just like the enjoyment of it. Can I and put that on? Can I put that? Can I use that as a blurb? Yeah. Um, how did you feel about the, uh, was it the Goodreads and the Amazon reviews? <laughs> I'll just stay my, state my, I thought it was so funny. Like, on the one hand, it really upset me because this is a dope book, but it sounds like, the press is pretty dope, so you you so you got some recognition from that from the press. But um, I found it really confusing when people were saying this is over my head, um, and I don't know what's going on, um, because it didn't seem like an intellectual book yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, it felt like a stylist, like just really great style and. Yeah, like a misunder, like a complete misunderstanding. Or something. I just think that it's not for everyone. That's for sure. I also yeah. had a lot of, not a lot, but I had some people on Amazon um, were misled by the title and the <laughs> shut up. And, true. <laughs> yeah, and the picture. So they bought it for their ten-year-old child. Right. And then left me angry an angry review about how it's inappropriate for children. <laughs> That's awesome. Which was actually my favorite thing. That's my favorite review it was from an angry mom. Yeah. Yeah. I feel okay about that. I feel like it's there have to be people that don't get it, otherwise it's not gonna, you know. Yeah. But yeah. were you thinking of it as a heady book? Not at all. Yeah, I didn't think so. Not at all. But I can understand that the style would be off-putting to some people. I guess. I don't know. Well, yeah, if you, like, grow up reading, like... Fucking Twilight. Jane Austen or Twilight, yeah. It's not... It's not traditional. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't feel like experimental to the point of like not being what's the word like that you can't that, like you understand what's going on. Yeah. It's not, it's not yeah. Not super experimental. Is is live blog what how is it structured? Like a diary, kind of. I mean, just by dates and times. So it'd be like mm. eight ten a.m. Took Clonopin. Eight nine a.m. Dad gave me coffee. Is it? Because you were dating Megan for a minute, right? Yeah. Um, is it fairly autobiographical? Yeah, it's totally autobiographical. Totally right. So yeah, so she just the beauty of the book is people have done it before with like journaling and diarying you know we all have diaries do we uh no but you know what i mean like diaries have existed forever but the amazing thing about live blog is that uh it happened as as it was happening so like she would say 8 10 a.m this is what happened the last like 30 minutes 10 minutes an hour and then she'd update it 2 p.m this is what i did four hours ago mm -hmm. so it was like as if you're living her life and in a diary the difference is like so it's immediate i think is what the new york times called it the value of mm -hmm. immediacy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i want to read it yeah, I feel like it either opens itself up to you or it doesn't. Kind of like um, Infinite Jest or Pony Castle. 
<laughs> um, either gonna love it or not, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have six more minutes. We have eight more minutes. Yes. I have six. You have six, okay. <laughs> Um, so what's the plan in, in Mexico? What, what are you going to? Um, I'm writing. Are you going to write? Yeah, I mean, I'm leaving pretty soon. So it's, you know. Um, I'm, I'm mostly, right now, I'm mostly taking notes on stuff. Uh, on a screenplay that I'm working on, like a feature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Feature length. Yeah. Are you you're working on a, a screenplay for like a feature film? Yeah. Jesus. How's that going? It's actually going okay. It's going well. Okay. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I I just um directed a a, a short film that I also wrote in December. Yeah. And it's sort of a spiritual sequel to it. Sure. And I, so I feel good because I completed the first. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> and That's now cool. I, yeah. You can, you can, wow. So you would like, you'd have a, it wouldn't be a sequel, but like a spiritual sequel kind of thing. Yeah. It's a spiritual, it's, it's totally, in yeah. fact, it only, I only thought of, of it because I finished this and I was like, oh, what's, I was having a conversation with someone and um, it's sort of like I, I really want to write some something from a male perspective which I haven't ever done. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you write poetry? My short stories and flash fictions are like similar to poetry, mm -hmm. but but no. Sure. Do you? Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, I want to put out a book of poetry. That'd be dope. Oof, yeah, it'd be dope. Um, Vlad, House of House of Vlad, House of Vlad just published. Um, Rebecca Moore. Book, so I know they're doing poetry if they mm. love it. I don't know them. Uh, it's House of, yeah, House of Vlad. Is House, it House of, of Vlad? No, this House is of House, of, House of Alexander, Hotel Alexander, yeah, by House of Vlad. Yeah, it's House of Vlad. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's uh, Brian Allen Ellis's thing. Cool. Um, and then That's cool. I think Disorder Disorder Press would publish poetry as well. I know for certain Joey Grantham's publishing house would do it because Joey Grantham's a poetry writer. Mm. Joey Grantham is the editor for um, The Nervous Breakdown. Right now. I don't know what that is. Yeah. So look up, um, <laughs> well, my, your best bet is probably um, House of Vlad. The Nervous Breakdown Book Club? Yeah, yeah. So the editor is Joey Grantham. Let me look up. Uh, Joey Grant. I'd also just quickly like to point out that this is not my own personal art yeah you're in Mexico CCM press oh it is disorder press yeah so disorder and house of Vlad would are looking at poetry mm, cool what is it can you send it to me the manuscript yeah, the poetry. Yeah, I can send you some stuff. 
cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, this feels like a great place to end. All right. <laughs> um, well. To anyone who's still watching this. To anybody who's still watching this. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Um, so. I, I'll uh, shoot you on Instagram. A good time for the interview. Okay. And thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me.